This week's legislative update looks at lawmakers planning on working a one-day-a-week schedule as leadership and the governor get down to hammering out a budget. Joining us now is Ray Stern, state politics and issues reporter for the Arizona Republic and azcentral.com. Ray, good to see you. Thanks for joining good us. Good to see you. Um, so what's this, this was once-a-week schedule? What's this all about? Well, um, the legislature uh, doesn't have that much to do, I guess, over the next few weeks. But no, they, they do, but they finished up most of their bills, uh, the bulk of them. And um, they've got a few, um, you know, potentially difficult bills that they're, they're going to be working on, but they don't need to be there every week for that or every, um, you know, all four days of each week. Um, and what's going to be going on mainly are these budget negotiations. That's the most important thing that the legislature does in some ways is create this budget. And um, uh, so the leaders will still be there almost every day meeting with the governor or her uh, staff. Is, is there not some irony that there's no reason for the rank and file to be there because they're not involved in budget talks? Does that sound right to you? Um, I guess it might, um, you know, just because you don't want to have too many of them in the room at one time negotiating hundreds of difficult line items for the budget, um, then it might never get done. Um, and so, so these meetings are, I guess, intimate to some extent. Uh, they involve the, the leaders of the legislature, the GOP leaders, the, the people that are, that are uh, in control over there um, by a one seat uh, vote uh, or margin in each uh, chamber. So Senator uh, Warren Peterson and House Speaker Ben Toma will be meeting with the governor and or her staff uh, probably at least twice a week, and then they will relay what's happening to their caucus and uh, discuss the things that they did. Of course, they don't want people to end up disagreeing. They don't want a surprise. So, so they will involve uh, the, the Republican caucus, and they expect the governor's office, I think, to, uh, to impart uh, information to the Democratic leaders so that, that they're on the same page. I guess I guess I, I, kind of naive of me, but I seem to remember a while ago that the budget negotiations and talks were a little more public and, and the public was a little more involved, but is that this doesn't happen anymore, does it? It hasn't happened for the last couple of years, uh, certainly, yes. especially with um, uh, divided government that, yeah. that we have there now. Uh, the per diem, they're not going to be there. Are they still going to get their per diems? They are still going to get their per diems um, every day of the week, and that includes weekends and holidays. Um, the, the legislators that live out of Maricopa County uh, get a pretty, pretty good per diem. Um, and, yeah, they'll, they'll continue to get that even though they're coming in for, for one day a week. Okay. And that, that goes, but it does drop after, what, 120 days or something like that? Right. Um, and so then it'll drop from um, the out-of-county legislators get, I think, $238 uh, a day. That'll drop down to $119. Um, in county legislators get thirty-five dollars a day, and that'll drop to ten. Yeah. So they might. Yeah. That ten dollars, of course, can't even buy you a hamburger these days. Whether they show up or not <laughs> right. is the easy idea. Okay. So we talked about budget negotiations, and obviously, it's leadership. It's not rank and file. It's not the public. It's it's upstairs. And, and uh, what's going on with that? Um, well, not that much up until now. Um, they just had their first sort of solid budget meeting yesterday, and apparently not that much happened, but they were happy that it happened at all. The Republican leaders claim that, um, that uh, Governor Hobbs has uh, canceled a, a lot of budget meetings that, that had been scheduled over the last few weeks. And when I called Governor Hobbs' people to ask about that, her spokesman told me that um, the governor wasn't aware that, of any canceled budget meetings. Uh, which was kind of interesting. I said, well, does that mean that you're, you know, uh, denying what, you know, they said about canceling meetings? They didn't get back to me on that. And when I told uh, Senator Warren Peterson about that, he, he kind of laughed and said, um, yeah, she's not aware about uh, that much over there, which was, which was a pretty interesting dig. Um, but I, I just don't know because they, they uh, aren't always communicative uh, from the governor's office to the press. So there was, but there was a meeting yesterday and there's supposed to be one now tomorrow? There's one tomorrow as well. And so hopefully that's ramping up and yes. they'll, they'll actually discuss substantive things. Um, um, I don't know whether they're going to talk about the toughest things first or, or leave that till later, but there are definitely some tough things in there, in, in, including Governor Hobbs' idea that uh, she's going to make reforms to the um, uh, private school voucher system that will save the state about $250 million, and Republicans have said that's, that's not even an option. So, um, you know, we'll see how, how much they, uh, they want to do that. Is, 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 could the governor have been waiting for the latest revenue projections? Because aren't they coming out here shortly? They are. And there's a, a, 
um, basically the legislature has a finance advisory committee that's going to advise them on the latest revenue projection figures that'll be on April 11th, which is Wednesday or Thursday. And um, there's some thought, though, by the Republican leaders that, that it may not change that much. Um, and whether it does or not, I, I do think that their argument that there could have been budget meetings up till now um, to hammer out maybe the, the easier things, that makes sense. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to know if it's, uh, it's, it's about a, a $1.7 billion shortfall for, for two years this year and next year. And it would certainly be good for them to know if it's much greater than that. How long do you think these talks could last and how much of a factor is it that Speaker Toma is running for Congress? Well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, he won't be working every single day, um, even with the budget talks. Um, uh, he may be down there most days, but he'll have, I suppose, some time for, for, uh, for some uh, campaigning, maybe not as much as one of his competitors, Anthony Kern, who's a, who's a senator also running for, for CD8 against him, who now has only one day a week to, to show up. Um, but this is probably something that's going to take, um, you know, at least the month of April, I would say, and, and into May. So um, if they're only having two budget meetings a week and there's literally uh, well over a thousand line items, um, then it's going to take a while to hammer all those out. Hey, last question before you go. We talked in headlines about the Supreme Court hearing, uh, I'm sorry, the, the uh, appeals court hearing, mm -hmm. uh, the Texas law and the constitutionality therein and leaning heavily on S SB 1070 with the Supreme Court ruled and the provisions knocked out by the high court. Is there, am I hearing that there's a, a movement afoot among Republicans at the legislature to go and send something similar to that Texas law to the ballot? There is, actually, and that's one of the things that they'll be looking at, um, not just the budget, when the legislature comes in once a week, they have some uh, ballot measures, including uh, what may be called Border Day, uh, in terms of um, maybe putting that uh, in Arizona Border Invasion Act in there, as well as um, something that the House Speaker had proposed that would reform the E-Verify system and make it more robust. So, yeah, um, I, and they are looking to what happens with the courts in, in Texas um, before they uh, maybe do that, but um, uh, it, that's a plan right now. Indeed, it's a plan, but it doesn't sound like Speaker Toma's all that excited about the plan. It seemed like he, he, like he was saying people aren't necessarily doing the right, what's, what's that all about? I think there's concern uh, about it for sure, um, but um, there's also a lot of enthusiasm for, for, for this bill, the Border Invasion Act, which not only allows uh, Arizona police to act as immigration officers, but allows Arizona judges to actually deport people. Um, yeah. The federal government, of course, says that, that that's their purview, and so they're fighting hard against that. Um, but um, yeah, the, this, that bill and the E-Verify bill have problems, and so those aren't gonna get done quickly either. I'll also say that, uh, that uh, Peterson told me today that, um, Senator Peterson told me that they're gonna have an election integrity uh, uh, package as well, something that could go on the ballot that would deal with some of the Republican concerns about election integrity. Um, and he didn't give me full details on that, but um, we know that they've been talking about the potential to uh, maybe uh, give voters the choice to end early voting in Arizona which um, you know, uh, may or may not be popular. So voters will be able to vote early on whether or not they want to end voting early? Right, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. People, people will send in their mail-in votes uh, and, and maybe they'll be voting to never do that again. There you I, go, <laughs> all right. Ray Stern, Arizona Republic, azcentral.com. Good to see you, thanks for joining us. Thank you.